Hey all, this is the second lecture on 11.9, um, functions represented by power series. The last time we talked about the power series for 1 over 1 minus x, which looks like this. Very simple power series. And we did various things like plug things in for x, multiply the whole thing by power of x, to get power series for a variety of functions. We're gonna do that one better, we're gonna do calculus. So I want you to remember that what this means is that the partial sums in this series are polynomials. This means that this non-polynomial function is approximated by these polynomials. Why do we like polynomials? One reason is because we can take derivatives and integrals um, so what we're going to see now is that you can take, because you can take derivatives and integrals of polynomials so easily, you can take derivatives and integrals of power series just as easily. Okay, so here's the basic fact. So suppose I've got a function that's represented by some power series. Remember what that means? These are some numbers. And you take each of these numbers times x minus a to some power, starting at zero and going. Um, that's a power series center today. It's going to converge in some radius of convergence, r. So from a minus r to a plus r, maybe including the endpoints. We don't know. It's, and let's say it converges to that function. Then we also get a power series representation for the derivative. How do we do it? We just take the derivative of each term. The derivative of c0 is 0. The derivative of c1 times x minus a is c1 c2 times x minus a squared is 2, c2 x minus a. And in general, the derivative of ck times x minus a to the k is k times ck x minus a to the k minus 1. Okay, We start at 1 because the 0 term is in this expression is 0. Okay, So you just take the derivative of each term in the power series. It's a polynomial. It's easy. Same thing works for integrals. Okay. If we want to integrate that function, we get a constant plus, now you just integrate each term, c0 times x minus a, c1 times x minus a, when you integrate it, you get c1 x minus a squared over 2, c2 x minus a cubed over 3, and in general, you get ck over k plus 1 times x minus a to the k plus 1. These power series converge in essentially the same place f does. What I mean is it will converge on the open interval. Sometimes if f converged, you know, included the right endpoint, f prime won't, or the integral of f won't, or maybe if f didn't, the integral of f will. So the endpoints can change in this process, but the radius never changes. Okay, and you can rewrite this integral expression because the integral from a to x of f of x is equal to the integral from a to x is equal to zero when x equals a. Then when you plug that in, you find that that the constant disappears. So you get um, the definite integral has this nice form if you choose a as your starting point. Let me show you how that's used. Remember the derivative of one over one minus x. That's one minus x to the negative one is minus. 1 minus x to the minus 2 times, because of the chain rule, minus 1. That's 1 over 1 minus x squared. That tells us that 1 over 1 minus x squared has a power series, which is just the derivative of the power series of 1 over 1 minus x. Derivative of x to the k is k x to the k minus 1. That should be a minus 1 there, I'm sorry. So I'll fix that in the notes. This will converge when the absolute value of x is less than 1. If you check the endpoints, it doesn't converge on the endpoints. Um, now, on the other hand, the integral of 1 over 1 plus x by u substitution is the natural log of 1 plus x. So that means that the natural log of 1 plus x is the integral of the sum of x to the k um, oh, this is 1 plus x, so I'm sorry, it'll be um, 
minus 1 to the k, x to the k. And to integrate that, we just add 1 to the exponent, divide by the exponent. And we get minus 1 to the k over k plus 1, x to the k plus 1, which we write like this. And you can also do a change of variables. If you write out the first few terms of the sum in k and the sum in n, you will get the same value. So we'll usually write it in this more convivial form, x to the n times minus 1 to the n minus 1 over n. This will converge when the absolute value of x is less than 1. It actually converges when x equals 1, but not when x equals negative 1. We won't worry about that. OK. So what can we do with this? Well, we, now we've got lots of things that we can find power series for. So if I plug something in for x in the expression I just wrote down for ln of 1 plus x, we do the same trick. We plug in x to the fourth for x in the power series expression of ln of 1 plus x, and we end up with the sum minus 1 to the n minus 1 over n, x to the 4n. If I ask you for the power series representation of an integral, maybe I don't know how to do that integral. But I, if I can find the power series representation for what's inside, then I can do the integral term by term. So the power series representation for ln of 1 plus x is sum n equals 1 to infinity minus 1 to the n minus 1 over n x to the n. If I multiply it by x squared, I just multiply the x squared times x to the n and get x to the n plus 2. And then if I integrate that, I am going to take minus 1 to the n minus 1 over n. Then I'm going to add 1 to the exponent and get x to the n plus 3, divide by the exponent. And that's my expression. Okay, So um, functions that we know nothing about but their power series, or that we know a lot about, and their power series, but we don't know how to integrate, or for some reason didn't know how to take the derivative, we can still find the, a power series representation. Here's a couple of problems to work on. And now I want to show you one more thing that's going to lead us into the next topic, which is I just want to make clear what it is that we're talking about. So let's focus on this one function, ln of 1 plus x. Um, this is has a power series that looks like this. And let's just write it out. x minus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 minus x to the fourth over 4. Remember what that means. That's telling you that the partial sums, if you stop that infinite sum at some point, say at n equals 5, you get a polynomial. And this is claiming that polynomial is a good approximation of the function. And as you go down this list, polynomials get closer and closer to that function. Let's watch that happen. Okay. Um, so here's first, I'm going to just look at the first two. n equals 0, where Sn is 0, and n equals 1, where Sn is x. So here, in Desmos, I graphed y equals ln of 1 plus x in red. Notice that it has a vertical asymptote at x equals minus 1, because the natural log of 0 is undefined. Um, and then I graphed s0, which is the line y equals 0, which just crosses it here at x equals 0. And I graphed y equals x, the green line, which is just tangent to the function at x equals 0. So remember, we did a power series centered at 0. So the center of our interval, which goes from minus 1, to 1 is 0. And um, the s0, this is always going to be true. The value of s0, it's just a number. It's just the, it's a line, that, a horizontal line that goes through, crosses the function at a, at the center of the interval. And s1 is always the tangent line approximation at a. Okay, We know the tangent line approximation is a pretty good approximation to any function like ln 1 plus x near the point a, near, in this case, 0. And that's what it looks like. Doesn't do a very good job as you get further away. Um, 
So now let's look at the next two terms. So here's S2 in red, x minus x squared over 2 is a parabola. And in blue is S3, the cubic x minus x squared plus x cubed over 3. And now I've written 1 plus x in green. I've zoomed in a little bit so you can really pay attention to the fact that the interval where this is supposed to converge is minus 1 to 1. And now you see these guys do a pretty good job of approximating. So between maybe almost a minus a half and plus a half, pretty decent job of approximating. And then they spew off, right? The red line curves down when it should be curving up. It doesn't go down nearly as fast by um, uh, as uh, we approach negative one. So the red line does well in the middle, but really kind of falls apart at either end. The blue line does better. It's a little closer over here to the green line. It bends down further, still not far enough, but further. And then it bends up and starts to pull away from the green line at one. So really close near A, doesn't do such a good job at the endpoints of the interval. We're gonna do one more term. Here's S5. That's a fifth degree polynomial. It's in purple. Ln of one plus X is in green. And now you can see from about minus 0.6 to about 0.6, they're pretty much indistinguishable. Perfectly good, you know, really, really accurate approximations. They still pull apart at the endpoints, but not so much, okay? This is what's always going to happen. When you have a function and you have a power series approximation in an interval, it's going to do, the first few terms are gonna be fabulous, very close to A. As you get further out, the range at which it's a decent approximation increases pretty soon. The approximation is good through most of the interval, but it's never great at the endpoints or near the endpoints. And as you go further and further out, it gets closer and closer in the middle, but still does a terrible job far away. Um, and I want to tell you, remind you, point out one more thing about this. If you notice, as we said before, that ln1 plus x has an asymptote at x equals 0, then it makes sense when you take a power series centered at 0, the best you can hope is that it will converge from minus 1 to 1, because it always converges on an interval centered at a, and anything bigger would go past this point where the function is infinite. So obviously the power series, if it's trying to approximate it, can't be can't converge to a finite number. So the interval is as big as it can be given the places where the function goes to infinity. That's going to be a pretty common behavior. Um, if the function doesn't go to infinity, the interval ever, then you can hope that the interval might go all the way to minus infinity to plus infinity. If it blows up at some point, the interval is as big as it can be um, until it hits that blow up. But notice, there's something kind of interesting here. Because intervals of convergence have to be symmetric around A, um, the fact that this function blows up at negative 1 means that the power series stops converging at 1. So this is kind of a weird thing. If you look here, this green function looks perfectly nice. And like, there's no reason why the purple function shouldn't you, know, you shouldn't be able to get add more and more terms and get a better and better approximation. But somehow this point at x equals 1 knows that this function is blowing up at x equals minus 1. And it remembers that fact. And the approximations over at 1 don't converge or converge super slowly, don't converge anywhere past that point. I'm not asking you to kind of say anything coherent about that. But I want to kind of warm you up. We will see this happening in a couple of situations. I want to show you something very cool and kind of abstract in a few days based on this key idea. OK, next time, we're going to learn a general tool to find power series representations of any function at all. And this is finally where you will start to see the power of this method. I will say right now. You've already got a method. If I asked you what's the natural log of 1.8, you could plug in. 0.8 
into this power series, this polynomial, or maybe add some more terms, and get a really good approximation of ln of 1.8. There's a couple of tricks that will then allow you to get a really good approximation of natural log of anything. I won't get into because we're we're gonna um, uh, we're gonna generalize these ideas more. But the idea is once you've got a power series representation of a function, you know how to compute that function approximately. That's what we're going to talk about next time.